Veteran Sherman S has proved itself to be a pretty awesome wheel. It's been five months and 3,000 kilometres now since my last check-in. I'm going to be covering what's changed with my riding, the wheel, my run-in with the law. And your foot is falling away. And also a crash I had and of course the running cost of the wheel. But before we get to that, we got to find out how it all began. Costs being hiked to keep our cars on the road. And I wanted a cruiser class electric unicycle that was reliable and well built. And of course have fun along the way. So it's been over a year since I replaced my car with the electric unicycle. Going strong, I've only used a Uber one time. Now it, it does get pretty rough in summer. That's why I'm only wearing a t-shirt. I do have elbow pads on the way. Um, just gets too hot for the motorcycle jacket. And um, that should be good enough for me to feel confident riding fast. Now, I've recently done a big teardown for the video. That'll be coming up later. So let's get to what's changed with the wheel. Well, not too much, honestly. It's held up great. Um, the biggest problem I've had is with the uh, seat. So it's fallen off a few times. I just found the seat on the side of the road, so here it is. Oh, so there is one thing that I've learned. <laughs> That's the seated acceleration technique. I guess the biggest thing has changed with my riding. I've just gotten more confident with it. Feel like I can really put my weight into it a bit more. And uh, I've also gained about five kilos of weight, which I'm happy about. And it makes the Sherman S feel a bit more manageable. I think if you're a heavier rider, you will appreciate uh, the power and just the, the weight of the machine a lot more. I'd say that my wheel's pretty well set up now with the power pads, the seat, the foot plates. Got it where I want uh, the setup to be. Pretty happy with that. Now the, the braking is something you can't really overcome. It's still a bit sluggish and you have to put a bit more into it than you want. Um, definitely comparing it to the Inmotion V11, which is just a lot more responsive in that regard. So I did hit a kangaroo, um, maybe around 35, went for a slide on the concrete, and my elbow got torn up through the jacket. So there must've been a bit of slip there. So that's not very ideal. So I think the uh, fitted elbow pads will be better in that regard. Um, wheels damage is pretty superficial. Just a bit on the trolley handle and the shell, but I do have these bumpers now that should really help with that sort of damage. I have changed my rain riding habits. I no longer put a rain cover over the top if it's you know light to moderate rain. Um, if it's torrential, I still will put a cover over. However, I've put a bit of plastic tape just over the buttons to prevent any water ingress into those buttons. So the tyre's been on here for nearly 5,000 kilometres and still got tons of tread. Really happy with the Michelin Pilot Street 2 for street riding. Um, that's my majority so I don't really want to put a knobby. I'd maybe get the Hardener K66 if I want to do a bit of hybrid, uh, but I would only do that when this tire runs out. So the general wear and tear looks pretty good on this. Uh, there might be a little bit of stiction on the suspension. Uh, slight oil leak. I'll get to that in the tear down. Uh, the bearings look good. So not a problem there. What about the AX30? 
Well, I haven't got a chance to ride it, but after watching reviews on it, I gotta say it sounds like the more exciting wheel, but you'd be lying to yourself if you said you couldn't have fun on the Sherman S. It's a bit more uh, steady and just, what is a bit more of a truck, just goes really, really stable, straight line, particularly versus uh, <laughs> the smaller wheel like the Innovation V11. So I do have the larger pads on here, the Nylon Ove Kinetic V2. That'll be a separate video, excited to put some more uh, testing into those. But they are especially comfortable compared to the V1s and the large is needed for the larger wheel. So The small V1s, which I originally got for the Inmotion V11, too small for the Sherman S, but oh, look at that. Yeah. Huge upgrade. So really noticing that extra size and that, a bit more cushion on the, those pads. So there hasn't really been any firmware updates over the year, just the main one was the high speed mode and then we had the, uh, the angle adjust for the side tilt, so that's good if you're riding uh, tracks or off road. And I had a chat to Seb at EUC World and he said that the uh, Shermans can't transmit their beeps to EUC World, the wheel beeps. So you have to set up your own uh, alarms. So I'll put up my settings now. The other nice change is that uh, EUC World is on the Play Store now, so you don't have to get a dodgy pack file. Now I've been seeing a lot of love for the Sherman S in the community. There's tons of mods. Um, from lights to seats to handles, 3D printed things. Um, really nice to see. And now I'll chuck up a uh, testimonial from Darren Boone. His original testimonial was quite positive. He also came from the V11. For his new testimonial, please pause the video, but the summary is that he's nearly worn through the original tire and no problems really to report so far. Uh, he's installed quite a few accessories and hit a raccoon sadly, but he didn't come off the wheel. Alrighty, so let's check out the teardown to see how it's held up in the garage. Welcome to the 6,000 kilometer Sherman S teardown. Um, note this isn't going to be comprehensive, just the highlights and any notable points that I find. And I'm pretty excited because I've got a bunch of parts to install. So firstly, is the upgrade kit from Leaperkim, which includes the uh, lower suspension brackets. Actually, looking a bit closer, I can see that this might be machined and this could be cast metal. So that's probably the main difference. So the original 75 grams, new one 76 grams. And of course the trolley handle upgrade. So those are the ones I'll be installing. So you had to install the new trolley handle. This is the old one. The upgraded foot plates improve upon the originals quite a bit in terms of grip. They are quite thin, but I haven't heard of anyone having issues with snapping or cracking them. They are quite large comparable to the Nylon Ove, but you don't get the angle adjust or the stud length adjustability. And I won't be using um, the little speaker they've included. I don't see a need to change that. Oh, and also in the upgrade kit, there was a new seat, which was only a tiny bit better than uh, the original. I won't be using it at all. I also got the Grizzler seat from my friend John Wall, uh, but I found that it's just too soft to be useful. So I'll be sticking with my DIY and possibly upgrading in the future. Alrighty, so onto the notes for the teardown. Uh, I found it was a bit difficult opening up the uh, compartment since it was siliconed, but using a paint scraper, I got through pretty easily in the end. I did find there was some light dust on the inside of the electronics, so there is a hole uh, where the wires come through. That needs to be plugged in some manner. I ended up using some grease and silicone. The grease is so that it's not super tight in there when I've come to disassemble in the future. 
Uh, the condition of all the wires looks good. The capacitors seem to be in good condition, no bulging. Now I did notice the left suspension had a little bit of uh, oil seepage and that meant that there was extra grime and dust just built up around that area. It didn't seem significant. It probably would be due for a service soon. Um, I just ignored it for now. Whoa, 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 that was a big mistake. I should have just taken care of it while the EEC was torn down. It's a really easy job. The main trick is to heat up the upper rubber seal to make it easy to take apart. The oil is really cheap at around 20 bucks a litre and you only need 150 mil per side. So in the future, I'll be doing that. Uh, in the meantime, I just have to take off this cover to see that it's not leaking too much. At the moment, it's just a very minor leak. So hopefully it'll hold up. All right, back to the video. Now on the mud guard struts, I did accidentally leave some holes uh, in there, even though I tried to plug it last time. So I went over again with a piece of plastic and fully sealed those up. And I noticed, um, yeah, it did improve the condition a lot in terms of uh, dirt in ingress. And now once again, uh, the impact driver made a big difference just pulling apart all the Loctite bolts, it made it a breeze. Now the bearing seals were in good condition. I opened them up and there wasn't uh, much dirt underneath them. However, they were starting to dry up. So that was actually one part that needed attention. Went over it with some grease, packed it in nicely. And I think that'd be good to go for a lot while yet. Now, I've, I know some people had their bearings go. Um, I've been riding in the rain quite a bit and uh, so no issues with mine yet. I popped the tire off to check the condition of that tube. Um, fine, which just goes to show how tough that Michelin Pilot Street 2 tire is with, withstanding that uh, thumbtack. But the bead was really bound, so I had to leverage it off using a 12-inch uh, motorcycle lever and a block to really pry it off. So I sense I damaged my old waterproofing on the uh, motor power cable. I cleaned that up and then resealed it with a bit of grease and silicone around there. So I'm pretty confident now that really nice and watertight around that area. Now, when I came to putting it back together, I was very excited to be using my torque wrench, uh, bring it all up to spec since when you're traveling at high speeds, I want to be sure that all the bolts are done up properly. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh my God. Yeah, pull, pull it over on the side, pull it over on the side. and I found that I was under tightening them by hand when comparing with the torque wrench. So I'm glad I did pick that up. I'm gonna make a separate shorts video about my torque spec for all the bolts on the Sherman S, so keep an eye out for that one. Now I finally found out how to align the tire. It's all about when you're tightening the axle bolts, how much you twist the, uh, the bracket that holds the suspension. So twisting it clockwise will draw the tire to the right when looking over the top. And you can see I really overdid it here. So I had to undo one side, loosen it up a bit, just relaxed it, put that side back together and found beauty. It was pretty spot on. So finally have an aligned tire. That's a big bonus. Uh, very happy about that. Didn't have to loosen off the other side. Very happy with how the Sherman S is holding up. Alrighty, back to the riding section. Yeah, as you can see, really impressive wear and tear from the garage teardown. Um, not really too many complaints. The teardown wasn't 100% necessary. I could have just kept riding, but good to stay on top of the maintenance. So when it comes to the running costs, I did calculate my car usage uh, and yearly running costs at 4,600 and comparing that to the running costs of the Sherman S it was around 200 bucks so massive savings there since I am car free since uh, about last year and now there are gear costs which a bit of investment and of course the initial cost but you know the car is going to have an initial cost as well All right, so I'll answer three community questions that I've received. 
One is, do I charge the Sherman S to 100%? And only if I'm going riding the next day. Otherwise, I'm happy to leave it between 70 to 90%. That's the sort of storage charge you want um, to give the battery life the best chance. Yo, I just wanted to elaborate on my charging practices. So I just got back from a ride and I'm on 40% battery. So I'll use this timer to um, get it started in about half an hour to allow the battery to cool. And I'll set it to about three hours to get me up to around that 90% battery charge uh, ready for tomorrow. And of course, balance it every um, you know second or third charge cycle. All right, cheers. The next question is, would I recommend or would I still buy the Sherman S? And it's hard without having tried the other competitors like the EX30. It's even harder now that Better and Sherman how has released their news about the Lynx. It looks pretty sweet. It's got the smart BMS, uh, 150 volts, the suspension pressure valve relief is an upgrade. Uh, it looks to be maybe five kilograms heavier than the Sherman S, debate about that. Uh, more power. 3200 watts versus 3000. Uh, the trolley handles at the back and it creates a flatter top which could be better for mounting seats and for handling the trolley around, we'll see that. And then it has integrated jump pads which is nice. But uh, it is a smaller battery at 2700 watts. Since I use it as a commuter and a car replacer, I'm still quite happy with the 3600 watts but this does sound really fun. I think I th some of the comments here really nail it. Uh, I'll just pull up some. Uh, 150 volt is just overkill IMO. That thing is going to be battery hungry to the max. I'll keep my Paton. Yeah, that's one of my concerns is the uh, drawdown on the battery uh, as it fades. Just how much is that top speed going to drop away? Uh, we also got, I wanted to get an upgrade uh, to the Sherman S, but I cannot go for less than 3600 watt hours anymore. So similar boat to me there. Uh, this doesn't interest me, not enough range. I have a Paton for my street commuter. If this was 3600 watt, I'd probably get it. So once again, it looks like the 20 inch wheels really need that extra battery. And I think for a city commuter, a 16 inch is gonna be more suited than a bulkier wheel like the uh, Sherman S. Uh, last comment, the more I wait on getting a new generation wheel, the more I feel I need to wait just a bit more. And that's the crux of the matter. EUCs are really developing so quickly. You just gotta get one that suits your needs. Um, if you keep waiting, you'll be waiting forever, just like uh, tech gadgets, phones and whatnot. All right, back to the video. But just based on reliability and um, the performance is still really good. I would say I would. However, if you can get a good deal on a similar spec wheel, then I don't see why not. However, it might be worth waiting to see if there's a 126 volt variant coming out. But with new updates, there can be introduced problems such as cutouts. So the Sherman S has a pro proven track record now. And then the last question is, do I still have my InMotion V11? And I do, I am willing to, uh, looking to sell it now. However, it's just a lot of fun to go a bit slower around footpaths, bike paths, um, that sort of thing. And then it was really handy to teach my friends how to ride on it. So it has had some uses. However, I have personally outgrown it, so I think I'd like to sell it to someone for their first wheel or maybe upgrading from a small wheel and then either put that money towards uh, maybe a 16 inch trail wheel such as the Paton or the V14 and uh, I do like to have two wheels in case one is getting repairs done. So I got three more videos in the works that's going to be uh, the Sherman S versus the V11. Yeah, I'm saying if you still have the, the V11, don't be upset. It's still a really fun wheel and you don't learning on the V11 with my friends. I uh, said to John, I was like, I feel all right. You can stay there and I- uh, Yeah, I got was... ditched pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. And the Nylonov Power Pads uh, Kinetic V2 review.
So keep an eye out for those. And if you'd like to support the channel, I've recently become an affiliate with e-riders, so you could use my referral link. Cheers guys, ride safe, and I'll catch you next time. Something's gonna break.